Hi, welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. If you're new, I'm Yasmin and this channel is all about um, my life, the different things that I'm doing to take control of my finances, my organisation and my career. If you like the sound of that, then stick around and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified when I upload more videos. So this video is a QA. and a I asked on my Instagram for some questions for this Q&A and I got quite a few. There were quite a few duplications, but I'm going to answer what the ones that I've got. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, I will leave the link below. So yeah, let's get into it. So for anyone who doesn't know already, I am sharing my debt journey on TikTok. Well, it started with TikTok. So somebody asked straight away, it was the first question, how did I get my credit rating so high? But there's two types of credit rating. One is out of 900 and one is out of 600. And I'm a few below the top of the both of those types of credit rating. I've never actively worked on my credit rating. I know sometimes people do because um, they realize that they've got quite a low credit rating. I have never really thought about it or known about it. I think it is just um, one of those things that's happened as a result of me being someone who has used and paid back credit cards my whole adult life. I got my first credit card as soon as I could and maxed it out and then paid it off. Not intentionally, I shouldn't really have got it at all. I have built up debt a number of times in my life, this time being the worst amount and that's what's different about this debt journey. I am determined to make like lifelong changes in the way that I approach finances and my attitude and mindset around money. So yeah, I guess the answer to that question is I don't really know. I've just spent a lot of money and paid it back on credit cards throughout my whole life. Quite a few people ask me what advice I would give my younger self. <laughs> I don't really know. I'm the kind of person that I don't have any regrets. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody makes bad choices sometimes. And I certainly have but I try really hard just to move on. I forgive people easily and I have to allow myself the same privilege of forgiving myself easily. I just honestly believe that your mindset and your energy is what you attract. So if you spend a lot of time wishing that you've done things differently, you won't be able to look forward and you might not notice opportunities that are coming your way. But that said, you know, it's really easy to say kind of just be positive all the time if you've got lots of things going on in your life that uh, means that you can't be but actual advice that I'd give my younger self I wouldn't have listened I wouldn't have listened to older me but I do wish that I was less self-conscious less self-critical and I believed in myself a bit more I think I've suffered from very long-term low self-esteem confidence issues and yeah, lots of those kinds of things. Definitely never been happy with my body and been worried about my weight a lot. It would just be all those kinds of things. I would try, hope to try and convince my past, my younger self that I should just be happy with me and who I am and that it will be okay. Someone very kindly wrote that I have amazing style and what is my inspiration? I've never really considered myself to have amazing style. So when I was about 18 or 19, I made the conscious decision to stop buying magazines because I'm very impressionable and it was making me feel really low because I would see things that I wanted. So I just completely cut it all out. So I don't, like, I don't really know any celebrities. I've never really watched TV. Um, obviously there's fashion that just comes in and out and I, I see what I see on social media. But I would say generally my style is just colour first of all and then I like to feel comfortable in whatever I'm wearing and when I say that I mean physically comfortable but also comfortable that it feels like something that I would genuinely wear. I haven't always got it right, I've definitely worn some really atrocious outfits in, a, in my life. I've always liked quite bold clothing so whether that's in shape or colour but yeah I think I just sort of I've never been the kind of person to go shopping for loads and loads of stuff all in one go. Everything whether it's my clothing or my house gets built up like really slowly when I see things I love. So yeah, that's it. I think probably colour is the most important thing to me. Another question was, could I give some tips to pay off debt? I'm actually going to make some videos specifically on the process that I'm going through. It needs a lot more time to talk about the whys and the different things that you can do because it's different for everybody. And there's different things that you can do as well. So for example, there's different ways of budgeting. Um, there's cash stuffing. There's all these different types of things. My overall advice would be to try and find somebody that you feel comfortable talking to. If you don't have any there are um, charities 
I will list a few below that I have been recommended. It's I don't work for them or anything, but I've been told that they're really good. I just think that you, whatever your kind of debt you're facing or whatever kind of money worries you're facing, it's good not to be alone. Obviously, not everybody has somebody, but just have a think about somebody that you trust. Could be a friend or a family. Try and talk through how you're feeling and what the situation is. I honestly think that sometimes when you are in a place where something is worrying you, you can become very overwhelmed with the problem and can't see a way out. And having a fresh pair of eyes on that problem can often show up like things that you can do. I certainly know I have felt incredibly helpless sometimes. I did feel like that about this debt before I started this journey, before I started making the TikTok videos, I did feel really helpless and it seemed like I was never gonna be able to get out of it. And I had to work on my mindset and come around to the idea that I was gonna have to spend, you know, quite a lot of time really changing and working out different things that I could do. But being able to talk about it has helped me enormously. I'm not suggesting you need to tell the whole world like I apparently have, <laughs> but just to tell somebody and talk people through it, it really, really helps. And everybody's got different experiences and different ideas. And I guarantee you, you will know people who you will have no idea they're in debt and they are, and it might be worrying them just as much. So you can support each other. Another person asked me if I could share some side hustles. This is another one that, again, takes a lot more time. I am sharing on my TikTok as and when I try things out. I've been trying selling stuff so far. So I've done Vinted and Depop and I've done lit reviews. I find both of them useful. I think that they're a bit different and there's some clothes that I will continue to sell on Depop and some clothes that I will continue to sell on Vinted. I think there's a, there's a place for both of them. Obviously, there's also then lots of things that you could do online, whether that's um, selling. Some people have made money from drop shipping. If you're crafty and there's something that you make or create, could you sell that on Etsy? I am not a crafty person, so I don't have an Etsy store, but some people have made some side income from that. I think it all really depends on who you are. Have a think about something that you potentially would enjoy. Try to start something that doesn't have startup costs or is very cheap to start up. Personally, I would stay away from companies that offer you a business kind of ready-made. I'm not a fan of MLMs in terms of the structure. I do like some of the products that are that are sold in companies that operate an MLM scheme. However, I have never wanted to be part of a business that relied on me kind of getting other people in and paying money to get in when I couldn't guarantee them to be making profit. I would have never felt comfortable with that. I would say just to really have a sensible think about what your startup costs are going to be. Do a bit of research, think about the things that you're interested in. Think about if you know there's any gaps in the market, is there anything you make for yourself that's really helpful that you make it because you couldn't find it to buy? And then there are a number of like survey websites, mystery shopping, things like that. I don't have an exhaustive list, but I am going through and trying them as I find them. And I'm putting like mini reviews of those on my TikTok. If you want to go and check out, I've got them like I've got like playlists now. So there's a little side hustle playlist. So any that I've tried, I'll just give you my kind of honest opinion of them. And then if you are trying to make money um, but you're not necessarily in debt, you might want to look at some investments. Um, I have been using a free share app. I haven't been putting money into it, but I've been sharing my affiliate code. And then every time someone uses it, I get a share, usually worth a couple of pounds. It's not huge, but at this stage with my level of debt, every single pound helps. But if you actually are not in debt and you're trying to just accumulate more money, that might be something that you'd look, want, to look, want to look into. I'm very early on my journey and I will keep sharing the things that I find. I make some side income from doing branded works on my Instagram. Obviously, that isn't something that's very easy to do. I have been building up my Instagram account for about two and a half years. It's taken a lot of time, both in terms of the, the length of time, but also the time that I've been putting into it on a on a pretty much daily basis for the last two years. Again, really think about what your skill set is. Sometimes people can get paid for writing blogs still or copywriting. There's lots of different small kind of freelance type work that you could be doing around your other responsibilities, whether that's looking after children or if you have a day job. Um, there are multiple different ways. But yeah, as I say, I don't have an extensive list at the moment, but I will keep sharing things that I find. 
Oh, and definitely have a look around your house and see what you can sell. Sell it on websites, eBay, clothes ones like Depop and Vinted. And then there's Facebook Marketplace is really good. I haven't sold anything on there myself yet, but I found a few sort of like wicker picnic baskets that I don't really need. So I'm going to try and sell those on there, although it's probably not the right season. Do a card boot sale. Yeah, just have a think about do you really need everything? And if you don't, is it worth some money? Because somebody else might want it. But the absolute key to budgeting and paying money, saving money or paying debts off, I honestly believe is keeping motivated and keeping focused. Work out what your plan is. What do you want to do? I don't want to just pay my debt off. I then want to save an amount of money to get myself into a very different situation in terms of my housing. So that's my overall goal. I know that it's not just about the debt. There's something I'm going to gain from it after. I've worked out what my income would be if I wasn't paying off all of my debts every month, which is like £700, just minimums. And I'm sort of like focused on that because I've never actually had no debts. Um, I've not always had an accumulation of 38 k worth of debt, which is what I started this journey with but I've never not had a debt that I was paying off. And so I am really excited and driven on this journey to get back to, well, not even back, but to get to that place where my income is just on my bills and what I want to spend it on and not paying for things that I already have bought. I feel like I'm rambling a little bit now, so I'm gonna finish on what would my death row meal be? I have actually never answered this question before, which is really weird because I feel like it's the kind of question that you get asked in job interviews and all sorts of weird places and like quizzes or when you're getting to know your team members at work. It would probably be something really kind of simple, but it would have to be done well, like carbonara. Yeah, let's go with carbonara. I think carbonara would be the main course I to drink a milkshake. I, I very, very rarely have milkshakes. But they do feel like a real treat when you have like proper American milkshakes. That would be it. I'm not really a pudding person. I guess the milkshake is the pudding. Um, so yeah, carbonara and a milkshake. Although the thought of that is now making feel, me feel quite sick because that is a lot in one meal. So I, I'll, we'll say that. We'll say that. But it's kind of like... <laughs> So that's it guys, I will be keeping an eye on this video. So if you've got any other questions for me, don't hesitate to stick them in the comments and I will try and answer them. Obviously, I am gonna do more videos where I deep dive a little bit more into the money stuff because it's really obvious from all your questions on my Instagram that you want to know more. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're new and you enjoyed it and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks a lot, bye.